G'day guys, Morsey here, welcome back to Morsey Plays Minecraft, episode number 51. And, uh, quick mention guys, thank you for all the support in the last episode, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a little tour around the world, and for those of you that downloaded the world to have a look, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a quick note on that, if you did download the world, uh, you will be in creative mode, and, uh, cheats will be turned off. If you do want to change your game mode or put your cheats back on or anything, just uh, mm. go to the menu and say open to LAN and then allow cheats on and say start LAN world and you'll be able to change back between you know game mode 3, game mode 1, game mode 0, whatever you want to do. Um, I just did it so that you could quite easily fly around but I didn't realise it will actually lock out any commands that you might want to use. So just do that if that's the case. Hopefully that download will stay up there for a little while and not get deleted um, because I'm not sure what um, Mediafire will think of this file which is about 400 megabytes being downloaded from my free account so we'll see what happens there. But uh, in this episode guys we've got some big plans. Okay so if you didn't guess where we are, we are mm -hmm. over at the Ocean Monument and we're quite a way away from home, 3700 to 2800 and you can see we've got the beacon beam heading up there, I've gone inside, I've raided the building, we've killed all three Elder Guardians and mounted a beacon down in the floor and I skipped all that because, man, it is hard work to kill those Elder Guardians, they are really hard work and it took me about an hour. Uh, the first two, it took me about 15 minutes, and then for another 45 minutes, I couldn't find the third guy, and he was stuck in this tiny little compartment on the edge, and it was only because I actually saw one of his tail, like his tail sticking out between the blocks that I knew where he was, so that was lucky. But uh, we've got some big plans for this um, ocean monument, guys, and there is some stuff going on underneath there, which you guys are hopefully going to really enjoy. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show that this episode or not because I'm still building under there and it's taking a lot of time and a lot of resources and I kind of don't want to let you down and show you a half finished project under there because uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be pretty cool I think. It's going to be really cool to watch. But um, one thing that it has uh, highlighted for me is that when we're getting to the business end of this base we're going to have to start to look at really improving our farms and getting a lot more efficiency out of them. So the reason I decided to come over here and start working on this thing is that uh, a lot of you suggested in the last video, uh, episode 49, that you'd like to see uh, sea lanterns and glass as part of the storage room. And so that is what I, will, I am going to do, but in order to do that, obviously we need sea lanterns. Now. This is where uh, you run into a bit of a dilemma because I can quite happily make a farm here but it's going to need a lot of resources to build the farm. So I'm going to need lots of iron, I'm going to need uh, lots of blocks and uh, lots of other things. So that means I've got to make better use of my other farms. And to make better use of those farms I have to make better use mm -hmm. of other farms. So it's just a big snowballing effect and uh, it gets down to the point where it's like what comes first? Heaps of resources to build the farm or the resources you get once the farm is built? And uh, I saw a good post on Reddit recently where a guy made a giant storage room and the top comment said uh, uses all his resources to build a giant storage room for all his resources. So it's kind of like which comes first. So that's how I'm feeling at the moment. A few things that I want to try and update is the iron farm. We need to get that functioning a lot more efficiently and get a lot more iron out of it. So we might be upgrading that sometime soon. Um, mm. I also need to get a wither skeleton farm going so that I can get some more beacons. Because this beacon here is on loan from the big hole at the main base because I needed a haste beacon to do some of the work under there and I've only got the one beacon at the moment. So we need to get a wither farm skull uh, with a skull farm going as well as well as uh, this guardian farm as well. So can I say as well any more times? We probably can. But uh, alright let's go back to the main uh, main base and just have a little look at what we're going to do today. Alright guys well uh, first thing I want to show you is we got some spoils from that uh, ocean monument and I got some sponge I think there is a third piece of sponge inside there still but I uh, got myself a couple pieces so they might come in handy at some point which is really good glad I got some sponge because that whole thing I couldn't find any sponge in there so 
I don't think we have any sponge in that particular one, so we'll have to go to another one to see if we can find some more. But uh, the first thing I want to talk about here is uh, this. Now this is my super advanced potion brewing system. And it's semi-automatic, so you have to put items in here to brew them. Very high tech, as you can see. Can you feel the sarcasm? And uh, yeah, we're going to need something a lot better than this if we're going to be going underwater and, and uh, messing around with this ocean monument. So I've come up with a design on how to make an auto-brewing system. And you know me, I checked out a few different designs and they weren't quite what I wanted, so I decided to make my own. And I think I've come up with something which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to get a few more little bits together and we're going to have a go at making this. And uh, this time I'm actually going to make it along with you guys so you can see how to build it because I think it is worthwhile. Alright, now I may need to stop a few times and double check my design because I don't know it off by heart just yet. But uh, let's get started here. So uh, I'm going to put some chests down here. These are going to be collection chests. And here we'll have a hopper into there. We're going to put our brewing stand on top. And then another hopper facing into that. And this is going to have another set of chests on top of that. So that's going to hold our water bottles. This is going to hold our finished potions. And from there we need to go into the top. And we need to go across. One, two, three, four. Um, let's do... Uh, what should we do? Four blocks under there like that, I think. And droppers, now the droppers need to face up into the hoppers, so let's just make ourselves a little platform here. Yeah, so this idea was um, sort of, I watched uh, a auto brewing system by Tango Tech, shout out to Tango, and uh, yeah, that was probably the, mm, probably one of the few ones that I really liked, and I thought surely I can make it a bit less complicated and a and a little bit easier to use. His got, has got a lot of different features which I don't necessarily want, so that's where the inspiration for this one came from. So we've got our hoppers facing up into there. These are going to be what's holds, what holds our ingredients into here. Uh, next we want to go around the back and we want to put a block right here with a torch off the side and another block here and one here and one here, and then we'll put another torch here, block there, and then I think we need to go up and over. So what this will mean is that uh, this hopper is locked while this one is not, and then this one is locked while this one is not. So um, that's how that thing will work eventually. So behind here we need to put in a repeater set to three, I think. Another repeater set to four. Put a block in between those two, and then we want to come out here, two bits of redstone like so, into a block, and we want a comparator facing into that. We'll put a dot of redstone on top of here, and this one here. This is going to be a little clock system at the back here. Okay, next we want to make a hopper clock, so let's do so. Remember you have to hold shift to face hoppers into each other like that. And we want another comparator right here into another block with another dot of redstone there. And I think we want another block here and a block here. And I think I had a light in the back here. I might just do that because that'll make it a break it up a little bit. A light, or should I put in a different block type in there? Um, let's see, what nice blocks do I have that I can put in? Uh, I might just put glowstone in for now. So we'll put some glowstone in the back here. That'll provide a little bit of light, which is cool, like so. And then we want to go across the top of this. And, okay, I think I want a dot of redstone right there. 
Okay, doing well so far. I haven't checked back on my map just yet. This here we need a sticky piston, and this side we need a sticky piston. We want to put a block of redstone in there. This is the beginnings of our hopper clock. Hopper timer. Dot of redstone here with the comparator facing out of here. And I think we need to also go up and like so. And yes, we need a slab. That's something I didn't have. We need a little slab here. So do I have any stone? Yes. Well, let's just make a quick stone slab here. So yeah, this design I've been working on for, oh, it's got to be about two or three days. So it took me forever to actually get it. I was doing things backwards and it, I had to have a sleep on it. And when I got back up the next day, I knew what to do. Sometimes I plan redstone builds in my sleep, I think, because I wake up and all of a sudden I've solved the problem. So uh, that is always fun. Right, here we go. We want redstone. Now, it's important we don't want this redstone to power this block because it plays up with the comparator. So we'll do that so it changes direction. And that... And you can hear all the hoppers fire then, which is good. And then what we want to do now is... What else do we have here? That one, that one. Oh, I think we're very close to done. What am I forgetting? Am I forgetting something? That one, that one goes around. We need some levers at the front here. So do I have any sticks? Nope. Let's get some sticks. Make some levers. So this is going to be an automatic system. However, you can turn it into a... Uh, you know, a, a non-automatic system, so you can pick what gets done and what doesn't. You might want to just, you know, brew one potion, you know, so that is an option. Okay, and let's do some levers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six will do, I think. Okay, so levers go here. One, two, three, four. And then I think we need some here. I'm not too sure on that yet. I haven't actually gone all the way through to building this just yet, so might be a few changes yet. Uh, next, we need to add in some... We need some ender pearls. Yes, ender pearls or snowballs. And I've got plenty of ender pearls somewhere. Oh, I can't wait to get rid of all these chests. Believe me, guys. Can't wait to get rid of them. Okay, here we go. So, next we want to go add in one, two, three stacks plus six ender pearls. Three stacks plus six. And that gives us the accurate, correct timing. Now, let's wait for this to reset very quickly. And we'll know it's reset because this redstone block will come over here. And it won't actually stay there until we have something in here. So let's just put uh, this and this, just for the moment. Okay, so that should actually stay put now. And what I'm going to do is go and get some bottles. I think that's done, guys. I think that is actually done. Uh, I'm just going to go get some bottles and some ingredients, and we can give this a bit of a test. Okay, so here we are, ready to go. And as you can see, I've just put some little item frames on here. And the other thing I did is just added this little switch. Now, this all it is is uh, this row right here that I added on. So this block powers this bit of redstone with two repeaters and a lever on this side and what that does is it locks this hopper from adding more water bottles and it also stops this hopper clock from running because when this hopper clock runs that's what uh, dispenses these items and in here I'll just show you what we've got so the first little dropper here is always going to be nether wart and I've got some nether wart here to put in so we'll put that inside there the next dropper needs to be either redstone or glowstone dust, depending on which one you prefer. Uh, for the moment, I want redstone dust. However, we'll have a look at something else a little bit later. So redstone or glowstone dust. From then on, it's any other materials that you want to add. 
So let's get the golden carrots in. Now I'm going to make, be making some potions of invisibility and also probably some night vision potions a bit later on but potions of invisibility so that I can uh, dig away this monument while I'm underwater and not be pestered too much by the uh, by the guardians that are around there and uh, that's pretty much it so you could load these droppers all the way up the switches at the moment all of these are active and to deactivate them you just flick it down and that one would be deactivated uh, so you could just make a regular potion, but we want to extend it, so that's fine. And let's take a look. It's already got some of these water bottles in here. And I've got a feeling it might actually do something a little bit strange when we first start it here. But all we need to do, hopefully, is flick this lever. And what we should see... First off, this clock starts... Okay, this is what's going to happen. These three bottles are going to end up down here. And when they do, they will start cooking. So let's have a look and see. Come on, work for the camera. There go the three bottles. Three more come in. And if we check, we've got netherwort. And in the lineup, we've got golden carrot, fermented spider eye, and redstone. And over here we've got the three that we took out, so let's get rid of those. We'll actually put them back up in there, water bottle, like so. Okay, so this is just going to keep going along the line here. And it's just going to, when that's finished, the next one pops in automatically, which is pretty common, you guys know, know about that, so that's fine. That one's going to go down, and this, this clock over here is uh, stuck at the moment. And we can actually we can actually affect the next batch just by flicking these levers right now. So you can do it while it's brewing, that's fine. And what we'll see is when this next batch comes out, so there's our potion of night vision. And we want it to be invisible, so we'll wait for the fermented spider eye. Then we've also got redstone. So what you'll see is the next potion that we brew won't have redstone, so therefore it'll just be a regular um, invisibility potion. And hopefully... If we see this, this will turn to invisibility. Once the redstone goes in, the clock has reset just over here. And the clock runs for just long enough to allow this last bit of redstone to go through. And let's watch this right here. When it gets just about finished, the timing should be just about right. So they're all three minutes at the moment. Flick that over. They all get pulled out, new ones get put in. Now the wart goes back in, and let's have a look. No redstone, because I flicked it. So the next one will flick it back on again. Over here we've got invisibility potion, 8 minutes. So that all processed. And that is how the system works. Okay, so this thing is just going to keep running until it runs out of items, or in until the chest becomes full. So I've got enough items in here to completely fill up this chest. All AFK, of course. I don't have to do anything to it. It's just going to keep running. If at any point I do want to turn it off, I can flick this, and it will only do the last batch, and it will stop. And the other cool thing is, if you want to add your other ingredients, it's as simple as doing this. So we'll put down some more levers here. And we'll put down some more droppers. And we'll put down some more hoppers. And then all we need to do here is just extend this signal out. So more redstone here, here, and here. And then all we have to do now is put our other ingredients in. And we'll turn that one off for the moment. And what else did we have? Gunpowder. Let's turn that off. And I think I had one more. Where's the other one? Uh, sugar was it? Maybe sugar? Let's get some sugar. Um, sugar. Okay, so we'll put that in and turn it off. And we've just extended the machine to take more ingredients. And that is all it took. So no extra wiring on this part of the clock. Just extra wiring here. So I think that is pretty awesome if you ask me. And as you can see, these ones here are the only ones running at the moment. And if we check in the in the chest, oh, that one 
Oh, that's right, we removed the redstone. That's why that one's shorter. And if we check back here, the redstone's back in again. Let's do, uh, let's do another little test. Let's see, what have we got in here? We've got sugar, so let's do... Get rid of that, get rid of that, and put on the sugar. And then I think... Oh, I've already got sugar. Whoops. And we'll make it a splash potion. How about that? Okay, so once this one runs out, we should see it... Oh, that one needs to turn off too, I think. Alright, so once this one goes through, that'll turn to a... Oh, why is there a second bit of redstone? That's a little bug. Anyway, we can just pull that out, that's fine. It'll keep working. Um, now, let's have a look. And queued up, we've got sugar and gunpowder for a splash potion of speed. And now that they are all set up, we can turn these back off. Turn these back on, because that's ones we want. And it's as easy as that. What do you guys think of that? Let me know in the comments. I reckon it's pretty cool. And I think I'll probably end up doing a little video on this, because uh, I'm really happy with this design. It's only... What have we got? One... Two, three, four, five, six. If you include the levers, although they're completely optional, you can run it without the levers. If you just want to do manually put in the ingredients, you want it to auto auto brew. So yeah, six across if you include the levers, and then it's uh, only as wide as well these two chests here, I guess. So it's not very wide at all either, depending on how many ingredients you want to put in. I haven't put blaze powder or any of those guys in there yet. So plenty more room for those. If you want to extend the storage of this, you can actually just add more chests underneath, or you can even go across with more hoppers into chests one block in front. And over here, you can of course add more hoppers up here and put more water bottles in the top. So there we have it. Okay guys, before we move on, just one more little touch. Little uh, note block to tell us when a new batch of potions is being brewed. So hopefully, let's see, there we go, perfect, and as you can see this is continuing on, doing everything it's supposed to, working fine, really good. Okay guys, so next thing we want to do is, there was a suggestion in one of my last videos by Twitchy, and Twitchy said that we should take a look at the elevator in my base and see if we can make it function a little bit better. So that's what we're going to do right now. Alrighty, so this is the culprit right here. This is the specially designed elevator I made just for this base and you've all seen it working before. So, does this work? No, okay. So I need to hit this to go down. Sometimes it works. Oh, sometimes I suffocate in a block, and uh, that is not good. So, let me clean this out a little bit. So, yeah, this has some issues. As you can see, there's ghost blocks here, which are a client-server-side uh, desync. And if I right-click, they actually... If I right-click with something, uh, like a sword... They actually disappear and that is what the ghost block player launcher works on down the bottom there let's see if we can there you go there's some more you can see and that causes a few issues when we want to use this thing and yeah twitchy has suggested that maybe we could use minecarts and it's something i hadn't really thought about before but of course minecarts are often calculated a bit better than players are when it comes to slime blocks and I want to try a few things so we're replacing the platform here and we'll replace it up there let's see if I can there we go and uh, first of all I just want to run this and see what happens with these ones oh wrong way let's go down yeah so there's still there's still some issues there Yeah, not so good. All right, so let's uh, let's go back upstairs again, and we'll try and put a minecart on and see how that goes because minecarts are actually calculated a lot better than player positions. 
Now what's happening there at the moment is the client and the server, because uh, Minecraft runs with an internal server, they disagree as to where the player is and also where these blocks are. So that's why you get ghost blocks and it's also why I keep falling off this thing. So if we use minecarts we might actually get a better result. So let's try this. I'm not sure if this will work. So let's put that down there. Now the minecart should sit still. It should. That's the keyword. Okay, that's the wrong way. Let's press this. Okay, I missed of course. It's facing... Mm, it's getting stuck there. Alright, let's just try going up, shall we? So if I jump in and... I think this is up. Oh, that's interesting. So even the minecart failed on that attempt. So let's replace this with a full block. Let's see if that helps at all. So let's do this and this and this. And let's try this again. Let's go down this time. Uh, okay. Still some issues there. So, unfortunately, that still doesn't work. Uh, as I understand, the, um, the guys over at Mojang are working on some block lag and FPS problems at the moment. I don't know whether that will affect this stuff or not. Hopefully it does, because I'd really like to be able to use this more than I actually do. It's just such a pain to use when it's always glitching out. And the more... The more machines that I make in this world, the worse the glitchiness is going to be, because it is lag related. So it's probably, you know, these hundred villagers here probably doesn't help. And neither does all the hoppers and things in my world at the moment. But uh, apparently there are a lot of optimizations coming Minecraft's way, so that might make it a little bit better for, for people like me who like to have cool contraptions that uh, lag the game quite a little bit. So yeah, this is still... Just not quite usable. Should go back to the old ladder, maybe. That's one way to do it. Alright guys, well, this episode has gone a little bit longer than I had intended, so we're going to wrap it up there. Um, I'm just going to head back to the underwater monument and start making my way down there. Now, um, I'm going to show you what we're doing down here, and hopefully you guys think it's pretty cool. Uh, still got a bit of work to do, but um, let's go take a look.